This video is the expanded macro level view of the topic from our two-part Earth disaster videos on the Genebekov effect, addressing the concept of the continental sized waves. There is evidence in the stories that span myth and religion. There are items from seashells to giant boulders pushed up thousands of feet or more onto mountains, to the surge deposits of bone, trees and earth, and down to the bottom of the sea where we can't currently see so well. The modern explanation of turbidity current driven ocean canyons, by the way, does not work so well when those canyons routinely stretch past the continental shelf and far into the depths of the sea. That indicates that the oceans were sloshing onto the land and then led to vast runoffs carving out those features. In truth, what causes the great waves is one of the gigantic mysteries of the disaster. It is actually a vastly greater mystery than whether or not those waves have happened. Now here are our basic categories of potential giant wave triggers. We'll go through these and you'll see that we've got many options and likely more than one was in play during the past events and will be during the next one. First, no way to have a micronova without pieces of the shell pelting various parts of the solar system. These hitting the oceans are a great way to get a great wave and remember the surge deposits are not burned just pushed, but this can't really account for everything. Only half of the earth faces the sun and tough to get those giant impactors all over the place. The volcanoes and the earthquakes that will occur due to the electromagnetic stress on the crust and mantle will be able to thrust giant slabs of the lithosphere, as well as creating explosions at the submarine volcanoes beneath the surface, not to mention the landslides they create as well. Up next in terms of what could create a giant wave is the one that gets the most favor and attention and historical coverage by the researchers. Earth tilts or wobbles or if there is a rotation change as per Doug Vogt of the Diehold Foundation. This is found in math, myth, religion and would make an excellent explanation for the waves if you could pull it off. And indeed, that two-part Earth disaster video set on the Genebekov effect shows how the intermediate axis spin instability that causes a flip may or may not apply to Earth as the interior is not a homogeneous liquid, but it has large scale structure and is far from symmetrical. But even if it doesn't apply, there's also the concept that this large scale structure can take magneto hydrodynamically driven torque due to the electromagnetism of the event. They could even break down. Again, that topic was examined in those two videos, where with an external push, we can finally overcome Einstein's dying frustration. But right now, I want to address the third category of the triggering factors for the great set of waves, and that is the same thing that may have sent ancient civilizations to the bottom of the sea. A mile up from sea level here in the New Valley of the Sun sits sediment from an ancient ocean, and the oceans were never that high on this planet. Either a wave deposited the sediment or this land was not always a mile up in elevation. The mantle should absolutely heave under the events we expect, even without a major large-scale structure disruption or torque, which again is likely, and the crust will rise and fall in various places. Where that occurs at the ocean, the water will slosh with it. In my opinion, the first category is likely to happen, but not likely to be bad enough to cause the global set of major waves. In terms of earth tilt versus rotation change, I do believe the rise and fall of land as the mantle heaves and plunges is an equally viable way to wash something halfway across the world. The third seems to me to be the more scientifically likely actor, but I must admit to you, I continue to be vexed by the ancient stories, the Pentagon report with Major White's data, and even the accounts of Earth wobbling like a drunkard. I'm not sleeping on number two either, especially after that two-part series. And I often wonder, if it weren't for the CIA cover-ups and the CIA infiltrated departments at Columbia University, if scientists would still be seeking the answer to how the Earth turns over, rather than scoffing at the very idea that it could. This brings us back to the three key items to surviving, which we know humans did all over the world last time. Where do you think we came from? Survival's in our blood. And the rise and fall of the land? Well, that is absolutely part of a third of that trio that you can't control. If your land sinks into the sea or a piece of the Nova shell lands on your head, there's not much you're going to be able to do. But for the lucky, left across the globe, wouldn't it be a shame if not being prepared and not knowing about location cost you that lucky survival card. In the next special episode, we'll go over some of these location points that can help you determine the best place to live on whatever continent you call home. Be safe, everyone.